Hi, we'd like to welcome you to Wild Wednesdays Live. Um, we are going to um, have an amazing show for you today. I just want to remind you of a few things. Um, it's so weird. Usually Chris starts it off, so I know when to start, but I, I think I'm live. Um, so anyways, um, we would like to welcome you to Wild Wednesday Live. We do this every Wednesday. Um, be sure to share it with your friends because we do do quite a few giveaways. We've got some really nice giveaways today. So you're going to want to stay tuned. We have Quilters Havens given a, um, it's going to have two winners that will get notions um, in a grab bag. Uh, Uniquely Crafts has needle and thread diamond kits. And Big Matt, of course, has a mat um, as her giveaway. And Linda Winter Designs has a Martelli small tasket basket, whatever that is. But I'm sure she'll show us. It'll be exciting. So we're going to, I'm just going to turn it right over to um, our very first guest, who's also um, my co-host. So it's always fun to see what she's got. Raylene, take it away. Hey, how is everybody doing this wild Wednesday? Uh, live to, uh, from Arizona. And, you know, I have to brag always when I come on because I know some of our folks are not in the best weather yet, but it's 88 today. It's going to hit 93 at our high, which is usually about three or four o'clock. So uh, we're running around in shorts and flip flops. So I hope all you guys get there soon. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, I know it's still crazy cold for you guys, but yeah, if it drops below 80, once it hits 79, I'm freezing to death and bundled up like an Eskimo. So this is much better for me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right, okay. Well, today. Great. Today, I wanted to show you guys, you know, I was kind of thinking about what can I demo? And, you know, there's always those items that at the shows, I just never get time to show. You know, I, I show a lot of things in both of my classes that I do, but there's only so much time. So I decided today that I was going to pick out some items that I get asked about frequently in the booth, but I never really get time to show you. So hopefully this is some things that you guys have seen and been wondering about. Okay, so we're going to get the camera down on the table right now. Um, the first thing I do want to mention before we get started <laughs> is um, if you go to the weekly specials page on the Quilt Craft Sew Mall, I do have an ad running this week for all of our different nesting tools. We've got a ton of different ones. And right now through Friday, those are 25% off. You just need to use the coupon code nesting. So here it is right here. Hopefully we've got it here, nesting. And that will give you that additional 25% off for a couple more days. So I wanted to mention that sale. Now everything that I'm gonna demo to you today is also on sale. And you don't need a code. You're just going to go to us through the mall. So when you go to the mall and click on Wild Wednesday, and then you click on My Little Box for Quilters Haven, as long as you order through there, you're automatically going to get the discount. And don't worry if you put your order in and it doesn't do it. I'm going to double check every order to make sure that you get your discount. So I'll show you that again in a little bit. All righty. So what I'm going to start with today is actually not quilting at all, <laughs> but it's a, a favorite item of mine. And when Ron and I are on the road, I get very bored riding in the van. So I crochet. And I know a lot of quilters crochet as well. And one of my favorite things to do is doing the edging on these little baby blankets or adult blankets too. But I tend to do more baby blankets where we just take the flannel and you punch holes along the edge. And then you do three different rows of crochet stitches. And this is something I can do because I don't have to concentrate on it a lot. So I don't get car sick. So I've made tons and tons of blankets while we've been on the road, but I will say I haven't made very many this year, obviously. But I was going to show you how I get those perfect little holes where I'm going to start my first row of crochet. And it's actually called a skip blade. A skip blade fits right on your 45 degree rotary cutter. Let me get these over here. And there's two different sizes. So we have the one that we use for the flannel for the larger stitches, but they also make a smaller one because, you know, like my grandma used to always do the edges of um, tablecloths and uh, pillowcases and things using thread rather than yarn for her crochet. So we have both of those. So I want to show you really quick how easy it is to use them. And again, you're just going to put these, whoops, I'm making a big mess here. You're just going to put it on your 45 degree rotary cutter. And I use this size a lot, so I actually just have a handle that I keep it in all the time. So basically what you're going to do is here's just a small piece of flannel. This is just like a little uh, comfort blankie that I do. You're going to take your ruler, and you're actually going to cut in about three-quarters of an inch. So let me get my 
get turned right here. So when you measure in about three quarters of an inch, all you then do is you just roll that right along your ruler. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong rotary cutter. Ron was trying to tell me and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Let me try that again. Don't you just love live things? Okay, so when I go on my ruler with my skip blade, it actually just makes those holes. I'm hoping you can see this where it just, it skips. In other words, it does a notch and it skits, a notch and it skits. And I, I hope you can see that. I'm not sure how good that's coming through, but that's what the skip blades are. So again, I just wanted to share that with you because I know so many people do both quilting and crochet. Okay, so uh, the next thing I wanna share with you is actually a super favorite tool of mine. And these came out probably, gosh, it's probably been almost two years ago now. I keep, we gotta allow for that year we were off. And when you're sewing on the sewing machine, many of us experience what they call nesting when you first start sewing. So in other words, you just get going and you get that bunching up underneath where all your thread is tangled up. That's called nesting. And what I didn't realize until this product hit the market was what causes that a lot of the time is just that your bobbin is not spinning evenly in your bobbin case when you first start going. And because a lot of times it's that metal on metal, it creates a little bit of friction, so it's not turning smoothly. By using these new little guys, they're called the Magic Bobbin Genie. Now this is just a disc of Teflon. By dropping that in your bobbin case and then your bobbin on, bobbin on top of it, then when you start sewing right away, that bobbin is spinning smoothly so you don't get near as much of the nesting. With my old sewing machine, I used to laugh. I said I was like a contortionist trying to hold the thread in the piece when I first got going so I wouldn't get that. And I don't have to do any of that any longer. Now, Magic Bobbin Genies actually come in three different size packages. For example, my machine, my bobbin holders have that post in the center and I load it in the front of my sewing machine. So I would want the ones with the hole in the center. Some of you have the ones that drop in on the top that don't have the post in the center. So they have one for that that doesn't have the post. And then if you need the type M, the larger industrial, a lot of long arms and things take those type M bobbins. We do have a larger one for that. Now they are not super cheap, unfortunately. They're $13.99 for a pack of 10, but here's the thing. I have been using the original one that I started with for probably the two years that I've been using them. So I usually tell you, you know what? If you have a couple of friends, go in together because you're going to get, um, I said 10, but it's actually a dozen in a package. So you can just split them up and everybody kind of you know, chip in two or three bucks to get them. Now, here's the first question I always get. Oh man, I've got a machine that is a top load and a front load. That's going to be like, you know, $28. You don't have to do that. Get the one that has the hole in the center and that will work on either your post or your non-post bobbin. So you don't have to. And I've had several customers test this out for me because I didn't have the other machine and they came back and said, Raylene, it works fine. You don't need to buy both sizes. So that's the magic bobbin genie. Okay, what do we got here now? Oh, here's another great thing. That a lot of you may have seen and not really known what the big deal was, and they're fork pins. Fork pins are so cool, and hope I should have pre-opened up this box because my fingers arthritis don't want to always work just great. But the fork pin, if you can see the way it's shaped, and hopefully I'm holding it in front of the camera good. Um, these are great for when you're pinning your binding down. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drag this little piece of fabric over here that I have just to show you, because when you pin, you're actually pinning like, it's like having two pins right at the same spot. So let me get this in here. And then on top of everything else, I put lotion on my hands right beside this where I'm slipping. But the fork pin is easy to take in and out, but you're getting two pins for the price of one right in that same spot. So they're really great for a lot of small items that you need to pin. So that's the fork pin. And they are very, they're nice and fine. They're super sharp. Now, since I've got this piece of fabric here, let me show you our next fun thing. Now these, I wanted to show you guys, because if you think there is any chance that you are ever gonna want this product, you need to buy it soon. This company, after many, many years, is retiring and they are just gonna shut down. So 
they have been keeping me informed with their inventory levels because they did have a warehouse full and I've been buying it by the case loads and they're going to let me know when they're almost out. But this is something that will be going away soon. And they are called the pin co quick clip pin covers. Now, a lot of you probably have or you have used a quick clip that we use to close our safety pins when you're pin basting your quilt. And this alone was a real wonderful tool. But after time, the, the way these things actually came about, which you may not be aware of, is the, the company that manufactures these little guys actually manufactured these for blind people because the original pieces actually on the end had the dots for Braille. So a person who was blind would pin a yellow pin clip on their yellow clothes, a pink on their pink. And when they were going through their closet or drawer, they would know what color clothes they were so they could coordinate, which was such a cool idea. But Paula Jean, who designed the quick clip, one day realized that those same pins could be used to pin base your quilt and used along with the quick clip. It would save us so much time. So what you would do then is when you put your pin in, when you're pin basing your quilt, Instead of having to try to get your fingers up underneath it there and close that pin, you just simply use that quick clip and close it quick and easy. And you know, for a lot of years, I demoed this product when it first came out. And I always laughed because I said I probably did the equivalent of pin basting about 100 quilts, just doing a little square that I was doing it on. But it's so much easier and faster because you're not trying to get your fingers underneath it there. And then in the reverse, when you're ready to take them out, you just pop them off with that quick clip. So it saves so much time. Now these work best with your number one safety pins. And I'm gonna show you real quick how easy it is to assemble these because you're, this is a one-time thing. Once they're on, they're on. You're not gonna take them off, but you're just gonna lay the safety pin down, take a small pair of needle nose pliers and you just snap them right in. You might, I don't know if you could hear that little snap. And then it's on there forever. Now you could take them off if you want, but why? You just want to keep your pins in, in a separate container that you're going to pin base with. So again, this is the quick clip and the pin covers. And again, this is a product that's going to be going away. So if you think you want to get them, you do not want to wait too awfully long or you won't be able to find them anymore. Okay, clearing off some more on my table here. Um, another fun product. Um, that uh, works along again with your rotary cutter. This is what I picked up earlier. That was the wrong thing is They also make a pinking blade and also a scallop blade which we carry both of them But I just wanted to show you today how awesome the pinking blade is because sometimes you are doing things where you want to pink the end Fabric that ravels a little or whatever this fits again on your 45 millimeter rotary cutter and Looky there how fast it was to pink that edge I'll do it a couple more times because I know you might have blinked and missed how easy that is. But look what a beautiful pinking edge we get with that blade. So that's another blade you might want to consider adding because, you know, you can switch these out as you're using them. You don't need to have all the different handles like I do. Um, you can just switch it as you need it because it's easy to do. But I love that pinking blade. So, again, pinking blade, scallop blade, and all the regular straight edge blades are on the website. Okay. Next item, well, let me use, I'm going to keep this black piece of fabric here. A lot of times we want to use our fabric glue so that we can do a little quick temporary glue basting. And most of the glue sticks, you know, are that big round end. And a lot of times it's really hard to get it just in the one place that you want it. So that's why I love this little Bowen refillable glue stick pen because it's much smaller, but it's also pink. So you see right where you put it. And then it's going to dry clear. And this is, again, it is a fabric glue. So you don't, have, it's just temporary. It's going to wash out. But the nice thing about these is like it's got a pretty long stick in it. You just hold the bottom, hold the top, and just twist it like a mechanical pencil so that you get more glue as you need it. And then when it's all empty, you can refill it. It comes in a single pack, a two pack, or a five pack. I just forgot to grab a two to show you. But of course, the most economical way is to get the five pack. But uh, this again, this is on our website. This will be part of our sale for today. And for me, it is the best fabric glue apparatus for actually getting it right where you want it when you want it. So that's on the site. And then let's see, the last thing we're going to look at today 
These have not been out for a real super long time, but I just absolutely love them. And they're the Gypsy Quilter Cool Pins. These are heat resistant up to, I think it's crazy. It's like 500 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm way off. Heat resistant up to 350 degrees. So you should be fine with them if you were to accidentally iron over them. And I can't get my box open, but I have one open here. They have a really nice end to grip onto. They're nice and thin. They're super sharp. So I love these pins, mostly because, you know, a lot of times it's just so hard to grip on to those little, um, you know, the little ball headed pins. And this just gives you a little more grip on. But again, the big advantage to the cool pins is this is not going to melt if you hit it with your iron. It's going to stay cool. It's not going to uh, to melt all over your fabrics like a lot of the pins do. So those are cool pins. They come in three colors, fuchsia, blue, and of course, every purple you have to have purple with quilters i don't know what it is about quilters and purple but we always laugh when we there's new product ads that come to us from our distributors because uh, they will tell us you know these are the colors available and i'll be like okay that's not that useful of a tool but it's purple so everybody's going to want it just because it's purple so so we do have all of those in stock and more on order coming in so if uh if we get any orders after we've depleted, I should have more in within the next day or two. So that was just, again, I just wanted to take a few minutes to share some things with you that I really never get a whole lot of time to show um, because of the classes and everything. And then also just want to remind you, Ron's going to get us all adjusted here. If you're interested in that great discount on all of our nesting tools, and we have squares, circles, hexagons, octagons, diamonds, stars, hearts. 45 and 60 degree triangles. So we have lots of different nesting tools. Those are 25% off through Friday using the coupon code nesting. And then of course, all of the notions that I just shared with you today, as long as you go through, um, go through to our website from the Quilt Craft Sew Mall Wild Wednesday page, you don't have to have a special code or anything for those. You're going to automatically get that 25% discount on those. So that's what I had to share with you. So I guess I'll give this all back to Beth right now. Perfect. Thank you so much. It's always exciting to see all the different <laughs> gadgets in use because, you know, the, the stores and the shelves are full of so many notions, but until you actually see them demoed, you have no idea what they're for. And it's a uh, we always purple is the best. <laughs> well, we always laugh because we'll say, you know, I, when I'm doing the classes, I'm showing different notions. I always say, there's probably half of you sitting here now that have this item in your drawer. You have no idea what it is or why you bought it. And I always tell them, I know exactly why you have it. Because you went to the show with some friends. You were kind of lagging back. They got up to the next booth, right? And by the time you got back up to them, they were all buying this thing. Well, you had no idea what it was, but you weren't about to tell them you didn't know what it was. But more than anything, you were not going to let them get home with something you didn't have. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully if anybody's got any of these in their drawer, now they'll get them out and use them. <laughs> right, right, perfect. Well, and somebody had said that the glue, once you're done with the glue, it's great for storing your needles in. So lots of Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those tubes are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, we're going to have a Brady Bunch um, session at the very end. So stay tuned. I know you will. Um, but stay I'll tuned be there. Answers. All right. We'll see you in a bit. All right. Bye bye, everybody. Um, and I want to remind you that if there is ever a problem with um, the video or audio, um, because all of us, I'm, we're quilt shop owners. Um, and uh, crafters, we're not really techie people per se. Um, so sometimes we do have internet connections and um, if we have a really big problem, we'll bring that guest on in the future. Um, if you have any questions, just um, hold them till the end. And uh, we do have live shows coming up very soon. Our very first one is going to be um, May 20th, I think, um, that Thursday through Saturday in Boise, Idaho. So um, if you're not close to Boise, Idaho, there are planes or trains or automobiles that can get you there. Um, you're not going to want to miss the um, first show on the West Coast. So make sure you schedule that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We will come to you live also if you can't make it there in person. Um, next, we have one of my favorite vendors, Amy. Um, Amy, are you there? I'm here. Can you see me? I can see you. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. All right. What do you have new to show us? Well, first, I'm just going to show for anybody that's new on here, kind of just a, just a quick overview of how this is done. And that way, um, let me start my timer real quick. 
Um, that way they can kind of see how it's done just to, and then I'm going to show like the sketch lights and the pens and kind of how to finish your item once you're done. Um, Cause there's several different ways that you can finish it. So first I'm going to start out with um, in your kit, you get your tool set and you get your beads and you get your design sheet. So that all comes in the tool set. So you don't need to buy anything for your kit unless until you're finished and however you want to finish it. So I'm trying, I, I'm these, this is a square kit. And so I'm doing package number 28. So if number 28, if you follow down is all of the small A's. When you first start, there's a tube at the end. And what you do is you pull this sheet back and you press this in and it fills that tube up with wax. And this is what's gonna help pick the beads up out of the tray. And so with the sketch lights that I have in, um, what's nice about them is, is they light up so you can see the letters a lot easier than in the dark. And so what you do is you pull this sheet back and it's very sticky here. And I'm just picking up the bead with the pen and I'm just putting them on the A's and they just stick. Now, after a while, if the pen stops picking them up, it just means that you need more wax. Now, when you wanna take a break, you just put this sheet back over it so nothing gets on the stickiness. And then I also have the, the sketch lights. I have it in a small, which is 20, and then I have it in a medium that's uh, 26. I don't go any larger because there's the, uh, you can easily break those. Um, but the small, um, they are, it's kind of like the iPad size. And then the medium is like a size of the piece of paper. I like the small size because they fit into any iPad holder, which when I'm traveling, I can just put it in it and I'm, it's safe um, for traveling use. Like if you're going camping or something like that, but it also has a three-way dim. So depending on the, what kind of lighting situation you're in, it's easy to just, you can go on option number one, two, or three. And so that's kind of the sketch lights that I have out. And I do not have them on my website yet. So you will have to email me if you want a sketch light. Um, we've been having some difficulties with my website lately. So hopefully um, on Monday, I'll have them online, but it's not quite for sure yet. And so now I also came out with some pens that are really fun. And these light up on the end. So a lot of times when people are doing this, their shadow oversees the letters or the numbers. Plus they're a little bit thicker. So if people have arthritis or something like that, it works out really nice. It's not as skinny as these small pens that actually come in your kit. And so these come in a five pack and they're for $15 and they take double a or triple A batteries, excuse me. And each end does something different, which I will show you here in a minute. I'm going to switch this to show you what the round beads are. Now, so the square beads, they fit closer together. And when I do these images, I do square when I need a lot of definition and a lot of shading. Now, the round beads are a lot easier for a lot of people because you can kind of just put them on wherever and you don't have to have them just perfect. Where the squares, they kind of have to go in a square, in a square, in the square area. Um, but they do move and they will get into a line as you go. So as you're pushing them in, in these little, I don't know if you can see it, in these little areas here that I haven't put beads in, when I put a bead in there, it'll move them around. So there's a lot of give on my sheets underneath where the stickiness is, where they will move the, the bead as you place it in, the beads will move around it. So, but a lot of people do like the square because they are easier to line up rather than the round beads. And so I'm just gonna bring over the round beads here so you kinda can see. Now I've been taking this thing to shows. We've had small little shows around Iowa that I've been going to. So I actually just unrolled this from out of the van. And the nice thing about my sheets are they're really, really thick and they will flatten out. And also if you roll them up and you unroll them, um, the beads really don't move any place. So as you can see, the round beads, you kind of, there's in-between spots where they're a little bit harder to line up. As you can see, they're a little bit more crooked here. And so I'm going to show you these pens. I'm going to turn off the sketch light to show you. So, and of course I did it with the square beads. I lined them all up. So if you line these up, there's little grooves in the tray. And if you line them up, this picks up about 10 beads. And 
sometimes it picks up less, but you can pick up more, more or less. But so this can pick up to 10 beads. And what you do is you just pull this back to wherever you're working to. And well, I guess it helps to turn on the light and that light shows you kind of where to place them. And so I'm just going to press them down and they just, then you also might have to move them over just a little bit. But the nice thing about my sheets are there is give, so you can move them over. Now, I really like this one. I like the three set where it picks up three beads at a time. Of course, maybe I didn't put enough wax in here. So if you have a problem, you just press the wax in here. All right. Now it should pick them up. So I'm just picking up the three and I'm just finding a three spot and I'm just putting them on the threes. Then I also have the one that curves out, which is nice. So if you're picking them up, you just kind of curve it out and you just put it on. So that's the curved one. And then I also have another one that picks up five, up to five to six. And then I also just have this straight one that people are used to where you're just picking them up and just putting them on the number. And the nice, the other thing is, is like I said, is if you put it like, let's say over here and you want to move it, you just put a little bit of pressure and it moves it right over to the S. So kind of makes it simple there. But like I said, I've had this at the show for at least probably two months, unrolled, rolled, unrolled, and it's still, still kicking. That's for sure. So so that's basically just a general of the new pens that I have. These are not online yet. I apologize. We just have some technical difficulties with my website. Um, but these are 15. If you do want them, Beth does have them in stock in her place. And um, she also has the sketch lights. Um, or you can email me and we can correspond that way, which should be on my link um, on, the, on the Wild Wednesday. So... Otherwise, like I said, Beth does carry them. So now once you're finished with your design, uh, most people kind of want to know how to finish them. Well, there's so many different ways that you can finish them that I've come up with. And as you know, I make my designs so they're easy to frame. You don't have to spend a lot of money at uh, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, things like that. So one I finish, and this is an idea that I came up with, and I put this in, and I haven't put the backing on it. But this is a 16 by 20 frame and the design is actually a 12 by 16. So I just bought this and I just put it in and I didn't even cut the edge off yet. And you don't need to cut the edge off because it's gonna, it's not gonna show. And I recommend just taping it onto the mat board that's on this frame to hold it into place. So that way, but it, nice, it gives it a nice border. So you can easily do this and it doesn't take much time at all. You just tape around the edges and make sure it's kind of straight and put the back on it and call it good. And so just get one size bigger on the frames if you wanna do something like that. Now my next thing is, is what you do is you can cut all the way around this edge. And I just use a pair of scissors and you can put it into just a standard size frame, which is a 12 by 16. And so I just, I just cut this out and slapped it right into the back of it, closed the edge and called it good. Now, sometimes depending on the frame, you want to get a frame that has a little bit of a lip on the inside. So that way um, it doesn't show any of the background. Um, and so like, for instance, with this background, if I can get it open, um, see how this has a little bit of a lip on the outside. And so if having that little lip kind of takes, takes it so it's easier. So you don't see the, the outside, um, the, or the background of the cardboard. So anyways, so that's how to frame it, um, on some of these. Now I also have, um, one that I just got that doesn't have that lip which it makes it hard because you can kind of see where I'm talking about where you see that side edge. I mean, these are really cheap frames that you can get like at Hobby Lobby for five bucks. Um, just if you want something that's inexpensive for you. 
Now these frames that I'm showing you, I got either at Michael's or at Hobby Lobby, just so you have an idea of where to go get these frames. So then I also have like the 16 or the, the 12 by 12s where I just did the same exact thing where I just cut the edge off and put it right into this frame. Now on the pin cushion, I used a shadow box. Now this I have to fix because it's wobbly in here. Now, if I put this on mounting board, which if I take it out and I put it on a piece of mounting board that looks like this, it's just a, a pretty thick piece of, a little bit um, thicker than a uh, poster board. Um, and you glue it on and you cut the edge off and you put it into this, it's gonna, it won't be as, as wobbly. Um, so, and it will make it stand out more against the glass. Then, for a really cheap way to finish them um, is, I'm looking for it, is kind of like the button jar that I have behind me or the, pup, the puppy paw print. Now, with this, this is on mounting board. So the thing is, is with, with canvases, canvases can be really flimsy. They can be really flimsy. And once you put it on, it could sink in or it could have wrinkles. And what you want to do is you want to put it on, glue this onto mounting board. So you'll glue it onto mounting board. You'll cut the edge off and then you'll spray glue it. You'll spray glue it onto the canvas block. Now, if you want, you can paint around the edge to give it some kind of color. Um, so there's different options that you can do. Now, once you're done putting it on a canvas or before you put it on the canvas, actually, when it's on the mounting board, I always spray a semi gloss over top of it or, or a gloss, and this will seal the beads into place so they do not fall off. And that way you can, if you dust, unlike me, you could, you know, dust them that way and the beads aren't going to fall off. So then the, my last one to show you is something I came up with and these are partial kits. So partial kits are part of it is beads, but the background is canvas. Now these have the bigger beads and this is actually a 10 by 10, but I came up with this idea that you take a 12 by 12 canvas block. And I actually did this in Houston in my hotel room. And so my only option was to buy thumbtacks, which is not recommended because I couldn't feel my thumbs afterwards. But what I did was I just picked out a fabric that I thought was really neat and I got one size bigger. So this is a 10 by 10 and this is a 12 by 12 canvas. And what I did was I just put around the edge, um, like I said, with thumbtacks. And so it gives me kind of a nice little fun background. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on and I'll spray glue it with the spray um, under or underneath. I'll spray glue this and then I'll attach it and then I'll let it dry. Now you can also do like a couple little fun stitches around the edge. You can put like a lace around the edge, things like that. So that's another option for you. Now the kids kits are really fun. The kids kits I made so you can go out to any Walmart for $1.50 and buy the little 4 by 4 canvas blocks. So all you're doing is cutting the edge off and you're just spray gluing it onto the canvas block. Just super cheap and easy. Now on the bookmarks, the journals, things like that, the journals, once you're done, they're a little tacky around the edges where the beads are. And so if you spray the clear acrylic over top of it, it'll keep the shimmer on the beads but it'll seal the beads into place so they don't come off. And plus it'll take away that stickiness that's around all of the beads. And so the journals are really fun. They take about an hour and a half to do, same kind of with the bookmarks. And then I also have the pencil cases that I always recommend and my instructions that you just spray over top of it. So that's kind of basically um, a little bit about the different journals that I have. Um, I have a ton online. I'm doing a huge sale on them. Um, the sale code is WILD, and it's buy one, get one 50% off, and all you have to do is put WILD in. Now, I also did another coupon for you, which is Wednesday, and that's 20% off of any kit. I am running very, very low on kits right now, and I'm hoping within the next month or two, I'll have a lot more new designs, new kits, and things like that 
So please check back with me. If you do see a design that is out of stock, please feel free to send me an email. I also have wholesalers that do carry these that you can always reach out to that's on my website too. Cause I know like Beth has a ton of different designs of mine too that I just might be out of stock. So that's basically it. And uh, hopefully, um, oh, one last question that I had from last time that was a little confusing was, so bead number, if package number 28 could be a different bead color. It's not always the same bead color. There's 3,800 different colors of beads. So 28 could be a different color than the last 28 that you had in a kit. So I just wanted to clarify that because I know there was a little bit of a confusion in that question. So anyways, well, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, I'll be here at the end. Perfect, Amy. Thank you so much. I know one question that I get all the time in my shop about your um, products are um, when they're finishing them, they can actually sew right through the plastic. Um, to incorporate yes. it into a quilt or into a pillow. So it it's just another form of fabric, guys. You can use it for all kinds of fun designs and things. Your imagination is your only limits for sure. All well, right. And I know, Beth, I know you post pictures of like the pillow of the partial one that somebody has done too. So definitely check out web, um, Beth's website too, because, or her, her stuff too, because she has a lot of customers that have great ideas with my kits also. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Amy. It's Thank always you. exciting to see the new things going on. Yeah. All right, stay, stay tuned and we'll bring you back at the end for more questions and answers. Sounds good. All right. All right. So if you ever miss a live show, you can always um, rewatch on YouTube or on our Facebook page. And um, when you go to the um, quiltcraftsomall.com at the bottom, that's how you're going to easily access all of the vendors that we're showing today, all of our past vendors, and a lot of our future vendors. So anybody who's involved with the Quilt Craft Sew Mall, it's easy to access through that website. So just go on there. For today, you can click on the Wild Wednesday icon, and that will take you right to the vendors from today. Um, we do have a code word, but before I say the code word, I just want to let you know that Please check back later today, like probably in an hour or two, check back and Raylene will post the winners and you just need to claim, it will say right in the in the post how to claim it, but you're just going to email Raylene your information and then us vendors will send you whatever it is you've won, but you have to get in contact with us. That's your job. So if you don't want to win, don't enter. Um, but if you want to, if you want to win, we will be happy to get it to you as quickly as possible. We do have one person that Raylene has, um, has generously kind of, um, said that since it was the holiday, we're going to give you till tonight at midnight. So if there is a Kathy and I know I'm going to butcher this, um, layers that layer L A R Z E L E R E. So Kathy L, um, we are trying to track you down. You won the Yazzie bag and pouches. So you have till tonight to Ray, um, to email Raylene at justnotions at verizon.net. Email her quick so you can get your prize. Um, but for this week's prizes, um, which we have um, Quilters Havens donated um, for two winners to get Notions. It's a assorted grab bag. Um, Uniquely Crafts has needle and thread diamond kit. Big Matt has a 24 by 48 inch mat. Um, Winter Designs has a Martelli small basket basket. So lots of fun prizes. All you need to do to be entered into that is to type in right now, needles. There you go, code word needles. All right, so um, we're gonna go right to Teresa at Big Matt. Are you there? Oh, wait, is, turn your volume on. Ron, can you hear her? No, she's not her. muted. Um, okay. So I think just her mic volume's down. All right, tell her what to do. Is that... Do you have the mic selected correctly here? Nope. Oh, there's her mic. 
mute it. Oh, hmm. I know. Someday in our next lives, we'll be born techie. Okay, hang on, girls. We're going to try to remedy this. Just keep typing in, in needles, but only type it in once. Beth, I wonder if we should see if we can go to Linda and then yeah. come back to Teresa. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, we'll come back to you guys. Okay, is Linda there? All right, so, you know, in life, you always have to be flexible. Um, so I want to remind you guys all to um, to get ready for the big Idaho show. Hey, Linda, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. It's good to see you again. What's that? I said it's good to see you again. Yes, it's nice to be here. You know, uh, two weeks ago, I was supposed to do this, and I had bronchitis. I'm still fighting bronchitis, but I'm feeling better, so I'm excited to be here. Good. So you guys know Martelli makes the no slip material, this magic material on the bottom. When I go to cut this right here, you can see, let me just very quickly go cut. I'm going to cut around and cut around and cut around. So when I want to cut perfect circles, if I take my time and cut, I can cut batting. I can cut insole bright. I can cut polar fleece. I can what, cut whatever because of this no slip material. So two weeks ago when I did this, it was before Easter. And I called this a tisk and a tasket. Let's make some baskets because of these little guys. Aren't they adorable? These were for Easter. And I had a bunch of other Easter projects that I wanted to show you. But it's after Easter. So it's kind of late to do a tisk and a tasket. Let's make some baskets. Easter. So I'm going to show you a ton of other baskets. But at the very beginning, it was mentioned that I'm going to be giving away Martelli's Tasket Basket. These are not the size that I'm going to be giving away. I'm going to be giving away the template to make this size. It's a perfect storage for yarn and for all of your goodies that you want to have in the car, that you want to have by your sewing table, that you want to have by your couch, whatever it is. This guy here is made from this template here. So this is what I'm giving away to one lucky person as the door prize today. So that's the Tisket to Tasket, let's make some baskets. I'm gonna film a video that'll show you how to take this guy. This guy makes this, is that crazy or what? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. But what I wanna point out is there's a seam here and there's a seam here. So I'm gonna have a detailed video on this. I'm not going to take the time today to show you that because I'm going to show you the difference between this, the seam and the seam, and there's a seam on the bottom. I've got a bunch of threads in here and I want to show you how to make this. This little guy, there's a seam, one seam. That one seam is the one seam here, the one, oops, yep, see, good. The one seam here, there's no other seam here. Then there's a seam here, and this is a set. There's three sizes. So I've got a large, a medium, and a small. If you're gonna be making something for somebody to put stuff in their car, a tisket, a tasket, let's make a basket for your storage, for all of your goodies that you have in the back seat. You know, the beach towel, where it's hot, those of you that are ready to go to the beach, all of that stuff. Notice I did handles here, I did handles here, I did a handle here, so it's totally up to you. And notice how these are floppy. These are squishy. These guys here, they don't have to have anything in here because this is a home deck fabric and they collapse down. So if you want it to be portable, you know, when you're making something like that, hang this up in your shower, hang this up in your laundry room and you put all your lingerie that you need to wash separately in this. You can sew the handles in. You can use a snapper Velcro, a button, whatever it is. Here's another one that, again, it's collapsible. This material here, these are shower curtains. So you can use all kinds of fabrics. Again, these are collapsible. So a tisket, a tasket, let's make a basket. You've got a sports fanatic in your house. Well, this is Oklahoma State, no affiliation to me. But this, see how it sits up nice and sturdy? 
because I've got foam in here, that NR foam that Bozel makes that I love so much. So there's a basket that you can stuff all the goodies in. If you're having a backyard barbecue, you can put all whatever in there. So this material can be home deck if you want, totally up to you. These are all baskets that have the one seam. And all of these come from my storage pod template. There's a small, a medium, and a large. What I wanna show you though is these guys here, you can see how there's a seam in the front and a seam here because I did four different pieces of fabric here. So you don't have to do that. If we go back to this one, you can see there's a seam in the back and I left this long so you can figure out where this is gonna go, if this is gonna hang whatever, and then you can put a snap where you want it. But let's come back to here. So this little guy and this little guy, one seam, one seam, they're made with this. So this one is made from this, this is made from the medium size, but I wanna show you how to do that. So imagine all the goodies that you would put in here for your baskets. So you can do coordinated sets if you want to, but what I wanna show you is how we're gonna take this template, and remember that grabs, I've got a fold that I wanna place my template on, and it tells me place on fold, when I go to cut, there are cut marks in this template right inside of here. So if you've got our Martelli rotary cutter, it's gonna go right inside of there and I cut. And as I go to cut, I wanna make sure I'm going where my fingers are not. See how my fingers are here? We don't wanna slice our fingers by accident. So it is set for me to cut those little pieces. And if there are a couple pieces left, then I use my scissors to cut that out, no big deal. I would rather have a little bit less than a little bit more, because I don't want that in there. Notice though, my fabric, let's see there. Notice I don't have fabric right here. That's exactly what I want to make this little here. So I'm gonna lift this up. And what I wanna do is again, I'm gonna use scissors that I have over here. I'm gonna snip those additional threads. And this doesn't have to be done really neat because this is my box pleat that we're gonna be joining you. But what I wanna do is use my template straight edge. I'm gonna line this up on my mat and I wanna square this up. This is squared up pretty nicely anyway, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim a little bit off of here. And what that's gonna give me is one seam in the back. That one seam is this seam that I have here. When I stitch that down, I'm gonna stitch this down and what that gives me is basically the ability to do this. Can you see that seam here? What I'm doing, instead of making this curve to go high, I'm making this short to go lower. And I can choose whatever height I want. So we'll stitch this down, we'll stitch that down, and then we're basically gonna be sewing the box pleats. The box pleats are done perfectly because of the template. The template, small, medium, and large, makes me, gives me the ability to make all those different sizes, which is really cool. So that's a really fun one to do too. And again, I have three sizes. But I wanna show you a few others. I'm gonna throw these out really fast. And Zeke, are you keeping track of the time? Because I did not look I, at the clock. I started so. my timer about <laughs> two or three minutes in. So. Okay, so you're gonna let I'm, me know? I'm kind of. Okay, mildly accurate. Remember this when I cut those? These guys here, you basically are cutting. We're gonna sew right sides together here. But what's really cool about that is I can go in and fold these in half once I've sewn these right sides together and stitch a dart. And stitch a dart and then fold in the opposite direction, stitch a dart, stitch a dart. What that's gonna give me is this. So see how I've got a dart there and I've got a dart there? And when I turn it in the opposite direction, I've got a dart and I've got a dart. What that gives me is a cute little basket that is perfect for holding little doodads, whatever it is, your threads, your bobbins, whatever, your zip clips, all of those things. So these guys here, that's done with that. The same concept I did, look how cute these are. This is a brand new project that I had never seen before and I thought so much fun. So this was done with the eight and a half inch triangle that Martelli makes. I have a 10 and a half inch triangle that made this one, where's the triangle at home. I packed it, I thought, I could have sworn I packed it. But what are we doing? We're basically going to be sewing our triangles and then folding and doing a dart and doing a dart 
and then doing the dart. Now what I did is I stitched a little bit here as well to give it a little bit of shape. It's all based on what you use in the inside. But these are so cute to put on your nightstand. There's money here, so this is made for coins. But you can use it for all of your husband's stuff, his keys, his glasses, whatever, based on what size it is that you make. So that's a fun one. If you all know Martelli's 3D face mask template that we have, these guys, they make face masks that are 3D. It allows you to breathe a little bit better. Well, I made a little basket. It's all about these darts. It's the same concept. So when I cut those, I basically just stitched that down. And I stitched that down. And I stitched that down. And I stitched that down. And it makes a cute little basket. Now, this is not a basket, but I had to show it because I think it's adorable. It's a mug rug. So this is Tula Pink's homemade fabric line. And this to me is such a cute thing. I would love to make a bunch of these and give these as gifts to everybody that I know that sews. And those were done out of the small and the medium. This was done out of the medium size. And this one was done out of the small size. So those are available on my website. We have five different sizes for those. You guys probably know my box bag template. It was my favorite template for years where I take my template that makes boxes and bags and we have a roof and a roof that i've sewn together a roof and a roof that i've sewn together and then we sew roofs to roofs these guys here and then we stitch this side we stitch this side we stitch those and it turns into this you can see how those four darts come together those four points come together the roofs well i did this out of blue jeans and i used handles from the hem here and you can see how rough it is but the idea is this cute little basket would be great to put whatever in and you can add a pocket not an adult pocket from the back side i can do that with the larger size this is the small size this is the regular size and then i have the large size so these two both I can do a pocket and they're really cute. I have a ton of videos. I've been showing those for years at the trade show. So that's a fun one. But I want to show you a brand new template set. I'm so excited about this. I just got it like 10 minutes before we started. This here, this guy here is exactly the same as this and as this in the way that I make them. So what do I mean by that? This guy here, if you look, I've got a box pleat and I've got a box pleat. I've got box pleats. I've got box pleats. It's all based on our measurements that you want to use. So I did for Martelli's um, retreat that we just finished, Quilt As You Go. So here's a little Quilt As You Go project. I need to create a box pleat here and a box pleat here. So this one matches this and then on the back side, so they match here as well. So I have five new templates that let me do that. And again, I'm so excited about these guys here. Okay, so I look and see, do I like this size? This right here is five inches. Do I like this size here? This guy is four and a half inches. I'm gonna grab this, which is three inches, right inside here. Remember before when I showed you the little marks? Let's see if Zeke can zoom in on here. Here's a cut mark and here's a cut mark. That's where our rotary cutter can go right inside there. So if I want to cut the box pleat here to be exactly the same as over here, I just move it over here and I can cut and cut. That gives me that box pleat. So when I'm ready to sew the front to the back, that's going to allow me to create a project like this. This one is a little bit shorter than this this guy here, but this one is going to be a lot wider. You can see how this, basically the side seams are here. I'm going to finish this one up in a video that I'm going to be doing on this. So stay tuned for that so you can see a finished project. Okay, Zeke's going to pop up on the screen my information. I have a 20% off on my website, WWL20. So Wild Wednesday Live, 20%. And I always give you till Friday at almost midnight central time. I also am doing a giveaway on my website. What is that giveaway going to be? Let me show you this. I'm going to be giving you the small and the medium storage pod so you can make the little guy, this guy here and this guy here. That's the small, that's the medium, or you can make the storage pod itself. I'm going to give you Martelli's hexagon. 
that's this little guy. We've got lots of videos on making this, but look how cute that is. The one I'm giving you is a little bit smaller. I think it's just a nicer size to hold all of your goodies. I've got a couple other things that I'm going to be putting on there, and it's about $140 worth of goodies. So enter that on my Facebook page. I have no idea on time, so I'm going to go ahead and say thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for my ideas. Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to post in here and I will get back to you, but also give me a call if you have questions uh, too. Thank you so much. I have no idea of the time. Sorry, I'm going to have to set an alarm in the future. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, you know what? I think we're just creative minds. We get busy going and we forget to keep, even if we set the alarm, we forget to, to, to oh, yeah. track. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm just going to have the alarm, have the alarm going. So you guys will hear that. I need to stop talking. Bye. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a minute. Stay, stay, uh, come back for the questions and answers. All right. So, um, again, I want to remind you that the code for today, but if you're going to type it in, make sure you come back and check to see if you won something so we don't have to track you down, um, is needles. And if you ever miss a show, just, um, you can rewatch it anytime. If you have a problem um, ordering through the website, which for all of our vendors, you can go to www.quiltcraftsomall.com. And um, the link for today's um, vendors that are that are demoing is going to be on the Wild Wednesday Live, just like the logo in the top of your screen right now. Click on that, and that will take you right to the vendors to so you can order. But if you have any problems with the discounts or anything at all, or if they showed you something that you can't find on their website, because um, a lot of us are quilt shop owners or, um, you know, we're not real techie people. So sometimes um, things just are complicated. But give us a call. We're happy to talk to you. Give us a call. Send us an email. Um, we definitely want to make sure that you're happy. So anytime you have a problem with any of us, just give us a call. Um, all right. So I'm going to turn it over. Hopefully we've got the big mat um, volume working. Hello. Can you oh, hear me? There you go. There you go. Ah. All right. We we made signs and everything just in case, okay. so you guys could see. <laughs> I love it. Sometimes you just have to improvise. That's All what right, we're gonna do. Right over to you. So you okay. Can okay. Hi everyone. My name's Anna with the Big Mat Rotary Cutting Surface. We are so so happy to be here. We're out of the garage and we're fully vaccinated. We want to thank. Eric, Chris, Raylene, Ron, Beth, and Ruth for working so hard every week to make this Wild Wednesday sh show so successful. So I know we're running out of time, so let's get started very quickly. We are the Big Mat Rotary Cutting Surface. We manufacture our mats here in the USA, out of San Diego. Our mats are made out of PVC. They will not warp, they will not buckle, and they do not smell. When you're cutting on our mat, you don't have to bear down while cutting because you get traction every time. We ask that you loosen the blade on your rotary cutter so that it rolls freely both ways. We do get those raised cut marks, the raised burrs. When those, that happens, you take our mat eraser and you're just gonna smooth the cut marks right back down to the smooth surface. We also have our stabilizer. Our stabilizer is what we use to keep your ruler from sliding around while you're trying to cut your fabric. You can use it on the mat, any direction you'd like. You see that slightly push towards the stabilizer and cut your fabric. You can also use it as a seam guide on your sewing machine. I can't get that up. We always ask people mm -hmm. to put a little lint from your clothes on there so that it's not so hard to pick up the first time. You can also use it as a T-square on your ruler. Just put it up against the mat, slightly push forward, and cut your fabric. I know we're running out of time. Sorry, I'm trying to go quickly. Uh, today's giveaway is the 24 by 48 mat. It will come with our mat eraser with the stabilizer and our 12 by 18 travel size mat. Congratulations to whoever wins that. For the 24 hour special, it's going to be the 30 by 60 cutting mat. It will come with the mat eraser, stabilizer, and the travel size mat for the 24 hours. 
Also, through the end of April, any mat size ordered will come with the travel size cutting mat. Also, to order, we have the bigmatrotarycuttingsurface.com. Click on the Etsy icon. That's where you're going to find the Wild Wednesday uh, specials or any of our specials on the Etsy website. Um, we prefer that you order on the, the Etsy website because it's just a lot easier to manage. Thank you, thank you so much. It's three o'clock, hopefully we can do some Q and A's. Thank you. Perfect, thank you so much. <laughs> um, it's, it was, it's, I always learn new tips and tricks. It's incredible how, I don't know how many times I watch your guys' video or any of the videos and I'm still learning new things. So thank you for the refreshers. Oh, um, thank you. I love loosening the, the rotary blade. Like that's yes. the easy thing that you can do that's gonna make your lives easier. Exactly, exactly. Perfect, all right, do we have all the vendors here? Let's, let's do questions and answers. So if you have any questions for any of the vendors, go ahead and type them in right now. Um, I do have for Linda Winner, um, what stabilizer do you use in your basket? You're in there now. Oops, do you have volume? And what you do is you just pull this back. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can. Okay, that's a great question. You know, it all really depends on the type of fabric that you start with and also what it you what you want it to do. If you want it to stand up on its own, then I love the NR foam from Bozel. So it's that soft, pliable, but it's got substance to it. This you can see how it just stands up. You know, it doesn't plop down. If you use batting, it kind of loses its structure. But you can also use a batting with some kind of an interfacing uh, fusible, like a woven fusible. Um, if you're using something like the materials here, where this is just a shower curtain or home deck, and you don't mind that it kind of collapses down that you really want it to, because you're going to throw that in a suitcase or in your car or whatever for trash, then nothing. So it's all based on your fabric. My video that I'm going to be filming this Sunday, I promise you, Zeke and I are going to be filming here on, on Sunday, and it'll be posted on Monday on the storage pods. I'm going to go through and show you lots of examples. So look for that video next week from me. So I'll go into detail and show you lots of examples. Well, it's one thing. Perfect. That's, Perfect. that's the special thing she's going to be asking. Amy, what kind of light are you using? Who? Amy. It's Oh, eight. No, in the light. Are you for your sketch box? I can't hear you. For your sketch box, what kind of light? You're talking about the invoices. Can you hear me now? Okay. No, it's all breaking, breaking up, crackling. I do hear a crackle. I'm not sure what the crackle is. Yeah, it's really. Okay. All right. I don't know who's crackling. Um, okay, let me see. What other questions do we have? Um, how do you make, oh, this is for Linda again. How do you make your machine so that bozo foam? Oh, it's amazing. Your machine has no problem sewing through Bozel. It's so, so beautiful. If you've worked with Timtex or Peltex, ugh, you know, it's not only the machine, but when you're turning it, it's really difficult. But the Bozel NR foam, and it's N I N dash R dash foam. So that in our foam stuff is a dream to sew with, a dream to work with. You all will see me sewing in the video that we're going to be filming. And I use that stuff for so many projects. This thing here was done with it too. And you can see it's really stiff. So I had to go in and tack the sides down a little bit because it has such you know, substance. So you're going to sew like a dream. I can promise you on any of your machines, you're going to be able to work with it. Perfect. Perfect. And then Anna, can you iron on your mat, on the cutting mat? Can you iron on it? You can. We ask that you put a towel on top. The worst case scenario is that it will bow up, but when it cools back down, it'll, it'll lay flat again. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, Amy, can you yeah. hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, what kind of light are you using? 
what kind of light? These are the sketch lights I sell. Yes. Yeah, I think that's it's what they're just, asking about. It's a it's a brand that I've tried several different brands, and this is the brand that I carry because there's really bad brands and really good brands, and so I've gone with this brand that I sell, um, and I work with I I get it from a manufacturer. So, um, like I said, there's different kinds, but the there's ones that just blink that don't work. They work for a month, and these seem to work a lot longer. So I've had right. this for a couple of years now. Well, and I, I can vouch for it. My ladies love that sketch box. Um, okay, Raylene. Yeah. Um, what does skip blade cost? Oh, and you know what? I said someone's gonna ask me a price, so I better get these back in front of me. The skip blades right now are six forty nine, and then it'll be twenty five percent off of that. Perfect. And for everybody, all of your codes are already in the system, right? Or do you guys want to repeat your codes real quick? Do we? Does for, anybody need that? So yeah. For my notions, first. you don't. Yeah. For my notions, you don't need a code as long as you go in through the Quilt Craft Sew Mall. And for the nesting tools, also you can go through the mall to get to the weekly specials. The code for the nesting tools is nesting. Perfect. We don't have a code either. It's it's just on the Etsy um, website under Wild Wednesdays. Perfect. And Amy, what's your code? I have two different ones. I have buy one, get one half off on the journals. That's wild. And then um, I have another code that's 20% off. That's Wednesday. The code is Wednesday. Perfect. And Linda, what's your code? Mine is WWL20. So Wild Wednesday Live 20, 20% on everything on my website. Perfect. Um, all right. I think you guys have answered all the questions. Um, so we'd like to thank you so much for all of the donations, especially because that's everybody's favorite is the prizes. Um, but thank you for your tutorials and your demos and educating us because um, it has kept all of us and all of our viewers um, entertained over the past year. But I'm glad that we've all kind of decided we're going to keep doing this into the future. Um, so thank you for joining us once again. And we will see all of you very soon, um, hopefully in person. Yeah. All right. All right. right. And um, we would also like to um, remind you guys to join us um, every Wednesday at 2. Um, we've got lots of vendors lined up um, for great demos. Um, and if you ever have any questions, you can always post it on the Facebook page and we will respond to you. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Um, she's asking.